All right, so today we're going to work. Um, this is exam one from spring of 2022. Um, so I guess we'll just say uh, spring 2022. Okay, so let's um, start by zooming in. And we'll focus on these true-false. Um, the force of pressure acts at the centroid of the gate. No, the force of um, pressure acts at the center of pressure. Okay, and in our notation, that is the difference between YC, which would be the, you know, the position of the cent the centroid along the gate, and the Y at the center of pressure, right? And that's why we solve for this guy. Okay, so this is false. Uh, weight equals mass times gravity. This is true. Um, weight also equals gamma times volume. Okay, so this is the, you know, this is usually how we do it in fluid mechanics, but both are true. Um, the viscosity of a gas increases with increased temperature. This is the, you know, kind of the strange and hard to think about case. But yes, as you increase um, temperature, you increase molecular exchange. And that's very important in gases. Okay, in a liquid, um, you would be more important, you know, the, um, you know, the, the intermolecular attraction is more important than the exchange. But in a gas, the exchange is more important. So increasing exchange increases the viscosity. So that'll be true. Um, the density of water can be written as 1.94 slugs per cubic foot. This is true, and so you could, you know, if you can't remember that, you take that 62.4 pounds per cubic foot, and then you divide that by um, 32.2 feet per second squared. Okay, and if you do that, you'll get this number right here. It's a three sig figs. Um, manometers are not used to measure surface tension. They are measured, they're used to measure um, pressure. Uh, for hydrostatic compressible fluid, pressure increases linear with depth. This is false. Okay, so if this said incompressible, okay, so basically, you know, the hydrostatic law is dp dz equals negative gamma. Um, if the uh, fluid is um, in, uh, incompressible, then we can change this to the change in pressure equals. Uh, negative gamma times the change in z because and the reason we can do that is because well gamma is constant right so um but if gamma is not constant then you have to kind of treat it like this okay so this was the trickiest question here i think trickiest okay um the pressure inside of a bubble is higher if the bubble is smaller um this is true and i was kind of hoping that you would remember that from the homework um if not the first the first question would have uh, pushed you in the right direction with that. Sorry, my dog's waking, making weird noises. He's rolling around on the floor. <laughs> All right, so air has a higher bulk modulus than steel. So generally, uh, well, not generally. Uh, specifically, the higher your bulk modulus, the um, harder you are to compress. So this is going to be false. Okay, um, the specific gravity, or the specific weight, oh, sorry, the, uh, the specific gravity of a fluid equals the density of the fluid over the density, the density of water over the density of fluid. And this is actually flipped. Okay, so this is false. Okay, so checking my key, it looks like I did it correctly. All right, a bubble made of soapy water, so here's our bubble, has two spherical circle surfaces, so you got inside and outside. Okay with a very thin layer of liquid in between. So this is thin. Like a balloon, the pressure inside the bubble, pressure inside, is greater than the pressure on the outside. Uh, this difference in pressure depends on the surface tension of the liquid. Oh, look at that, so there's surface tension right in here. Um, and the radius of the bubble. Okay, so the radius is going to matter. Um, for the sake of simplicity, let's assume there's no pressure on the outside. Oh, okay. You're going away. Um, yeah, if, if the surface tension is soapy water, so sigma equals 0 0.025 newtons per meter, determine the interior pressure of a bubble with a radius of 1 centimeter. Okay, 0 0.01. All right, so sorry, I had to go take my dog out. He was uh, being noisy. <laughs> All right, so anyway, so... Um, so what do we want to know? So we determine the interior pressure of the bubble. Okay, so now, now for reasons that don't really make sense to me, you all fought very hard to not draw a free body diagram. 
Um, it's clear that this bubble is not doing anything. It's not accelerating. So you draw a free body diagram. But you need a free body diagram where the P in, because we want the interior pressure, was a part of it. So we're going to cut this bubble right in half. Okay? So to the best of my ability, I'm going to draw this bubble like this. Okay, now it's got an inner layer and an outer layer, right? Okay, and now here's the bubble itself. It almost looks like a coconut or something. <laughs> um, okay, so now I want to think about the forces on the thing that I cut, right? And so um, I'll draw these forces, I don't know, I guess I'll draw the surface tension in blue. So the surface tension is going like this, and we've got a surface tension on this outer ring And, okay, and maybe I'll draw the one on the inner ring in green or something, I don't know. Right, so we've got one on the outer ring. There's also surface tension on the inner ring, right? So here we go. Let's draw all of those. Okay, um, you know, this is taking a little while, but, you know, whatever. Ain't no thing. Okay, so we've got all that surface tension, and then we've got a pressure. Um, pushing on this face, uh, you know, the air pressure, pushing here, right? Okay, and that's distributed over this face. Hello, my pup. I, I know, I just took you outside and you didn't want to play. You just wanted to growl and stuff. All right, so, um, so basically these forces, um, well, you know, they should balance each other out. So in the x direction, some of these forces equal zero. Okay, so um, we've got this uh, surface tension acting on this outer circle here. Okay, so that's going to be F sigma, what, on the outer, I guess. And then we've got one and F sigma on the inner circle. All right, so that's plus F sigma inner, right? Um, and then we'll subtract the force of pressure Oh, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> um, you know, the force of pressure on, like, the inside, I guess we would call it. Uh, I don't know, inside. All right, and those all add up to zero, right? So if we expand those, okay, so if we expand this thing, well, that's going to be sigma times L. And this one is also going to be sigma times L. And this one's going to be minus PA. And that equals zero, right? So then, so then the trick here, you know, the sigma times the L, you know, these two, these two right here basically are essentially the same. I mean, they're not exactly the same because, you know, the diameter, you know, the lengths of contact, you know, this length right here and this length right here are a little bit different. But the fact that this is thin basically says we can just kind of estimate them as being the same. So this becomes two sigma times L. So if we, you know, shrink that back down, but the length in this case is 2 pi r because of the diameter, I mean, it is the circumference of that circle, is the length over which this force is acting. Um, and then minus the pressure, so this particular pressure is, I should have put p in right here, p in, times that area, which is pi r squared equals 0. Okay, so at this point, this just becomes a question of... Um, you know, algebra, right? So um, let's see here. So let's, um, you know, this R goes away, this squared goes away, this pi goes away, that pi goes away. Um, and so we're solving this for PN. So PN equals, let's see here, four sigma over R, I believe, right? So, um, yeah. I think on your homework question where we were dealing with a, you know, a, not a bubble, but a, um, a droplet, it was, it was two sigma over R. Um, anyway, so at this point, you would simply just plug in numbers. So PN equals four, the sigma is 0 0.025 newtons per meter, okay, divided by the radius, which was 0 0.01 meters. Okay, so um, if you did this, well, four times that, that's 0 0.1, 0 0.1 by 0 0.01, we would get Pn equals, uh, I think, 1.
you know, 1.00 newtons per meter squared or pascals. Okay. And let's see, how did I grade this thing? Um, I, would like, I wish I had another color that was ugly. Give me this nice ugly magenta. Um, so what I was looking for is, you know, two points if you got this idea here that this was a sum of forces problem. Um, and then, um, let's see, so the pressure idea here, and two for getting the area right, um, plus one for knowing that there are two of those um, uh, forces of surface tension, plus one for putting that there, and plus two for calculating the correct uh, circumference. Okay, so all in all, this goes up to 10 points. Okay, and obviously I didn't say it up here, but these are 10 points for one point for each of those. So that's 20 points on this page. So when you look at your grade, you'll see a number down here. And that number is the total of this number and this number. Okay. Hopefully you got 20. Um, but, you know, I guess we'll see. Okay, so let's go down here. Okay. Um, all right. The pressure in a natural gas pipeline, this one right here, is measured by the manometer. Um, determine the pressure of the natural gas pipeline. So I'm just going to go ahead and call the pressure in there, pressure one. Um, some of you called that P sub N or P sub G. It's fine, whatever you wanted to call it. Um, over to the atmosphere. So over here we could call this P2, or I'm going to call this PATM. Okay, determine the pressure of the, gas, of the natural gas pipeline, which is coming into and out of your page. Uh, the specific gravity of mercury, 13.6. And the specific gravity of this particular oil is SG equals 0 0.69. Okay, it's annoying when they use SG and not S, right? And no one likes dealing with that. Okay, so I'm not going to use these SGs. I'm going to use SO and S mercury. Okay, a lot of you did S sub M, which is totally fine. Okay, so, um, so let's see here. So we need to build our equation, right? And so we're going to start at 1. So I'll do P1, and let's see, so we're right here. I'm not going to worry about going sideways, but then I'm going to go down this much, right? Now, this is always an interesting spot because they don't tell us what to call this. So I'm just going to call this H uh, natural gas, so maybe H uh, G for gas, right? And we'll say that the natural gas is a gamma of G, okay? So we're going downwards through the fluid, so we're going to add. Uh, gamma gas, Hg. Okay, now we're going to go sideways in the mercury. Okay, so we don't worry about that. Or we could think of that as going down and then back up. So we're not concerned about that because this bit cancels with this bit. So then we're going to go up six inches. Okay, so we're going up, we're going to go minus for the mercury, gamma Hg times, I'll just call it HHg for now. Okay, noting that that's going to be six inches. Right, so then we get to the oil, so we go up in the oil, and then we come down some bit. Okay, so this bit right here cancels that bit, the up cancels the down, but then we're going to just keep going down this bit right here, the remainder, which looks like that's going to be about eight, in that's going to be eight inches, not about, it's going to be exactly eight inches, right? Because 14 and 22, right? So, uh, so that's eight inches, but we went down, so we're going to add gamma of the oil times H of the oil, which it turns out is going to be 8 inches. Okay, so now we're going to get into the water. And again, we're not worried about going down and then going back up because this is going to cancel with that. Okay, and then we're going to go all the way up 24 inches. So we're going to go minus gamma water, H water. Okay, so that's 22 plus 2 inches, so that's 2 feet. Um, and that's going to give me to the atmosphere, so PATM. Okay, so at this point, this is the point in, you know, these problems where we want to expand, okay, and we want to get rid of things that are, you know, useless here. So, you know, natural gas, as most of you figured out, is a gas, so because it's a gas, this number is really, 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 really small, so we're not going to worry about that. So then we've got P1 minus, okay, so for this one, I'm going to change gamma HG to SHG, gamma water, um, HHG. Plus, I'm going to change gamma oil into, um, <laughs> what's that, S oil, 
gamma water H oil minus the gamma of water times H water equals, and in this case, I'm going to say zero gauge, right? Because we don't want to we don't want to mess with that side. We don't want to deal with that, right? So at this point, all we got to do is plug in, and uh, this is where all the points come in. So P1 minus SHG, which is 13.6 gamma water. Now this is the careful point, right? Because gamma water has two possible values, 98.10 newtons per meter cubed and 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. Okay, so it's a question of which one do you want to do. And notice we've got inches here. So we want to use the imperial units here. We want to use this one. Okay, so we use 62.4 PCF. Okay, and the height of the mercury is six inches. No, no, we don't want to use inches. We want to use feet, right? So that'll be six inches over 12. So that's a half a foot. And then we'll go to S naught, 0 0.69. Again, the gamma of water is 62.4 PCF. Okay, and H oil, let's see, oil, well, we went up 14, we came back down 14, and then we went down another eight. Okay, so it'll be eight over 12 feet. Okay, two thirds of a foot. Okay, and now we need to get to this bit right here. So we're gonna subtract 62.4 PCF. And we need the height in the water. So the water was 22 plus two. So that's gonna be 24 over 12, so two feet. Okay, and that gets me to zero. So now we're ready to just plug and chug. Um, and so P1 equals, um, you notice the most important term here, and this is usual, is this mercury term, right? If you were to, if you were to um, multiply all these out, this one's somewhere in the order of like 400, and this one's somewhere in the order of like 28, and this one's somewhere in the order of 120 or something, 128, I think. Um, anyway, you know, and this one, you know, this one basically doesn't matter at all, and it's for two reasons. One, it's not really a lot of oil, and two, like the specific gravity is very small compared to this 13.6, right? Over here, we've got a lot of water, but it still only has a specific gravity of one, so it's not really all that important. Anyway, so um, if you do all of that, you'll get... Um, if you plug all that in, it adds up to 540.42. Now notice I knew that I needed to use feet here because I had pounds per cubic foot here. Um, a few of y'all did inches there. So that's just something to be aware of. So when you do pounds per cubic foot times uh, feet, you end up pounds per square foot. Um, some of you went ahead and changed that to PSI. It's totally fine, but not necessary. I do want three sig figs though, 540 pounds per square foot. Okay, boom. Um, what were the other common errors here? Um, oh yeah, a few of you came in here and you canceled out gamma. Like right here you just said, okay, well gamma cancels because it's in all of these terms. Right, well first of all, it's not in this term. Um, but second of all, you know, you can only do that, but you're, what you're doing essentially is you're dividing everything by gamma water. So you could have canceled it here, here, and here, but it would have ended up on the bottom of that term. Okay, so just be careful with that. Um, a lot of you chose the wrong units here. Um, or some of you just got and got to the end and you just, instead of writing PSF, you wrote, um, uh, you wrote right, Newtons per meter squared. But I mean, you know, this is not, this is not that type of problem. Um, yeah, oh, and the, the other thing, and this is just something for, you know, anybody out there, you know, tell me what these pressures are. Some of you guys just started solving this, and you just called this like PA and PB, okay? And if it's if it's flawless, well then I know what you're doing what you're doing. But if it's not flawless, then I can't tell what's A and what's B, unless you label them. If you say this is B, fine. If you say that's A, that's fine. But you know, tell me what it is you're doing, okay? Anyway, so the way that I graded this one was what, where's my grading key? Oh, yeah, so it was basically this line right here. That's what I was looking for. Okay, it was like this, plus one for there, plus one, 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 and plus one. Okay? Um, the only interesting thing here, of course, like, you know, there were other things you could have lost points for. Like, if you got all that right, but then you had an algebra error, I just drew a little line like this. I said algebra minus one, you know. 
Um, one thing I will note is that the, the sign here, I attach with the distance. Okay, so the sun, getting the correct sign and the correct distance is one point. Okay, that's just always the way that I've graded this particular type of problem. Okay, so that adds up to 10 points. Okay, so let's, um, let's go down here. Um, this is another one that, for some reason, you guys didn't like to do free body diagrams. Um, you know, one day I'm going to understand what it is that makes that, you know, there's basically three problems on here. Three of the four written problems should have had free body diagrams, and almost nobody did them. All right, so in this case, here's my free body diagram. A shearing force of 10 dynes, okay, is applied, so that's this force right here to a rectangular place of five by 10 centimeters, okay? So it means this top area right here has an area of 50 centimeters squared, or if we convert that 0 0.05 meters squared. Um, I think that's right, maybe point, let's see, one, two, one, two, All right, point zero zero five. sorry. <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> All right, equals, 0 0.005 meters squared. Okay, uh, which sits on top of a high column of Newtonian fluid. Oh, 0 0.05 millimeters high. So this is, uh, well, H is 0 0.05 millimeters. Oh, my Lord. All right, let's, uh, <laughs> let's see here. 0 0.5 times 10 to the negative third meters. All right, we don't like all this business with millimeters and dynes. And centimeters. Let's get this. Thing, let's get. Let's get this party going with meters. With meters, and this dynes business, right? No one wants to do that. So I told you that one dyne is ten to the minus five. So this is ten times ten to the minus five newtons. Okay. It's not scientific notation, but it's you know whatever. Who cares? <laughs> um, as a result of the shearing force, uh, the plate moves at a speed of one centimeter per second. Well, that's awfully annoying too. Let's make that. Um, let's make that, we'll put it down here, uh, 0 0.01 meters per second, right? It's moving pretty slowly. Okay, what is the viscosity of this Newtonian fluid? Okay, um, let's see. You know, it's interesting. I should have put something in here saying that you can assume that this is linear. Um, most, nobody didn't do that, so it's okay. Um, but anyway, so here's our free body diagram, right? So this is a summation of forces. So you have to think about the, so the free body diagram. I'm going to show you. I don't know why you're not doing it. Let's, we can look at the clock and we can figure out how long this takes. It doesn't take that long, right? So there's a force pulling in the x direction and it's being resisted by the shear, the fluid pulling backwards by tau shear times the area. Now that's the free body diagram. That took, uh, you know, eight seconds or something. I don't know, not very long, and I was talking the whole time. Once you do that, um, it's just analyzing what you got here. Okay, some of the forces in the x equals zero. Okay, so we've got f in the x direction minus tau shear times the area equals zero. Okay, so let's see here. Um, so that f is given, we know what that is. Um, let's, go ahead and, let's go ahead and expand, f minus, this is mu, D U D Y in this case. I think in my key I put, oh no, I did dy, times the area equals zero. Okay, so that F then is uh, so we we know most of this stuff. So this is 10 times 10 to the negative fifth newtons. Nice. Minus mu. Mu is the thing we're looking for, right? Because we're looking for what is the viscosity. Uh, D U D Y. Okay, so because this is linear. I want to know the change in velocity from the bottom to the top. Okay, so it's going to be 0 0.01 meters per second minus 0, because it's not moving down here, and it's moving at 1 meter per second here. Okay, now we'll do the same thing with the y's on the bottom. So the top y is this number, 0 0.5 times 10 to the negative third meters minus the y at the bottom, which is at 0. Okay, now we'll multiply that times the area, which is this number right here. Uh, 0 0.005 meters squared, okay, equals zero, okay? So at this point, all you need to do is, um, you know, uh, rearrange this equation and solve. 
And if you do that, you'll get mu equals 0 0.001 newtons times seconds per meter squared. Or as some of you did, um, and I rather like it, um, 0 0.001 is you combine the newtons and the meter squared and you get pascals times seconds. I don't really like pascals times seconds because it's hard for me to kind of picture what, what that means. Admittedly, it's hard for me to picture this in either set of units. Um, but, you know, there you go. Okay, um, if H is doubled, okay, then what you would do for this one, now what I did is I just said, well, if H is doubled, let's see if H is doubled, so now all of a sudden this thing is up here somewhere, then what happens is we still have the same, you know, we get basically double, you know, the velocity profile looks like this, then what happens is this shear rate gets cut in, um, uh, it gets cut in half, okay? And so if this term gets cut in half, then this term is going to get cut in half. So, you know, because they're balanced, they're equal and opposite. So, um, you know, you're basically only going to push with as much force as you need. So you could basically just say, in that case, the force is going to be half of this force. So you could say, well, it's 5 times 10 to the negative 5 newtons, because it's half of that, okay, which equals 5 dynes, I believe, if you, if you want to go that route, okay. I think one of you did go the dines route, which was pretty cool. Okay, so um, you could have reset up this whole equation down here if you wanted to to get that, and the only thing that would have changed um, is um, this number right here would have been instead of being zero point five times ten to the minus three on the bottom here, you'd have had uh, one point zero times ten to the fourth, right? Because you would have been twice as big, right? And you would have plugged in mu right here. So you would have taken this value from mu, and you'd plugged it in right there, and you would have solved for this guy. Okay, but, you know, I, I prefer the kind of the, logic, the logical approach. Okay, so um, these are A and B parts. So um, this part down here is worth five points. I actually wish I hadn't decided beforehand that they were five and five, but I did. Um, so then down here, it's worth two points for recognizing this balance. Um, one point for this guy. One point for getting this area over here, and one point for correctly calculating this shear rate. Okay, so that's that. So we're gonna call that a little, a nice little ten pointer. Okay, so that's that. That's that page two. So again, there'll be a little number down here, which should be, you know, the addition of those two points. All right. So wait, what were the common errors on this one? Where's my sheet? Here it is. Um, yeah, draw a free body diagram, guys. Free body diagram. It will solve all of your problems. Solve a lot of them anyway. Okay. Um, all right, let's go down here where there were, this one just had carnage on it, so I'm not, probably won't even talk too much about the, the errors here. Um, well, I guess I will. But let's just start with a free body diagram, which nobody, I don't think, I think like, you know, three of you tried a free body diagram. Okay, so. A 60 centimeter square gate. Okay, so um, we know that we're going to need to figure out something about this gate here. So it's 60 centimeters squared, so it looks like this. One of you drew such a lovely picture of this. All right, 0 0.60 meters. Okay, um, its top edge is 12 meters below the saltwater surface. Saltwater, how annoying is saltwater? Okay, so it's got a, it's, you know, the gamma over here is 1.03 times the gamma of water. Um, 39 degree angle that's given in the picture. Bottom edge is hinged as shown. We know where the hinge is. What force P? It's annoying when they ask for a force P, right? Because that could be confused with pressure. Um, is needed to just open the gate. Okay, so here's a free body diagram of this gate. Here's my trusty, dusty ruler. And I'm going to do the free body diagram. Uh, let's see. Well, we don't really need a whole lot of area for this, right? But we do need some. So let's go right here. Here we go. Here's my gate. Okay, again, I'm going to demonstrate that these don't take that long. Okay, so we've got a force P here, and I've got a force here. Okay, and that force right here is usually called the force of pressure. Okay, now we have two more forces, ones that we hope to not have to deal with. Okay, we'll call this hinge, so this will be HX, and then we have HY. H, Y. 
Okay, so once we have that, that's my free body diagram. It's lovely, right? So um, in order to solve for P, I'm going to need to do the sum of the moments around H equals zero. Okay, and if you like, a lot of you like to draw this little thing here, right? Okay, so to do that, then I need to know some moment arms, right? So what I'm going to end up with is, let's see here, FP times its moment arm. Now its moment arm is this distance right here. Okay, now I don't know what to call that. Um, let's just call that Y, I don't know, YFP, something, I don't know. That's, that's what I got, right? Um, <laughs> Anyway, so that's going, that's a negative direction, right? Because it's going uh, clockwise. And then I'll do plus P times its moment arm. Now its moment arm is a little bit easier, right? So its moment arm is this whole thing, right? So it turns out that we actually know what that is. That's 0 0.6, 0 0.6 meters, because that's the length of this gate, right? So I'll call this, uh, I don't know, YFP, or really it's, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what we call it. Okay, I'm going to stop obsessing over that. <laughs> anyway, so in order to do this, I need to know two things in order to solve this. I need to know what is FP, and I need to know where this thing is acting. F, Y, F, P equals what? Okay, if I have those things, I can just plug them in here, and I can solve for P, and I can move on with my happy life. Okay, so that is Y. So if we step back a little bit, We'll note that, let's say, let's, let's say we'll step over here, that we have equations, okay? And the equations go like this. F of force of pressure equals uh, the pressure of the centroid times the area, which equals gamma H of the centroid times the area. Okay, so that's one equation that we're going to deal with. And the other equation that we're going to deal with is um, YCP equals YC plus Oh, dang, gum it. Um, plus IXX divided by YCA. Okay? So this leaves a certain number of unknowns. Okay? So we know this thing, right? It's 1.03 times gamma of water. HC. We need to know HC. We need to know A. Over here, we need to know YC and A and IXX. Okay? All of those things depend on the shape and where it is in the greater greater picture. Okay, so we're going to go up here. So here's where I've drawn my gate. Okay, 0 0.6 on a side. Okay, so where is the centroid? Well, the centroid is right here. Okay, so the centroid is 0 0.3 from this side and 0 0.3 from that side. All right, so 0 0.3 meters, 0 0.3 meters. Okay, now on this drawing over here, on, you know, over here, Okay, let's see here. So we're going to have to, you know, think, start thinking about this. Here's the centroid, and it's 0 0.6 from, I mean 0 0.3, sorry, from here, and 0 0.3 from here. 0 0.3 and 0 0.3. Okay, now I need one of two quantities, right? I need, well, I need four quantities here. I need HC, YC, IXX, and the area. Okay, the area and the IXX, these can be done almost mindlessly, right? So this is a rectangle. So for a rectangle, the area is 0 0.6 meters times 0 0.6 meters, and we get 0 0.36 meters squared. For the IXX, it's 1 12th of the base of that rectangle times the height of that rectangle, cubed, right? So I had to look that up. I can't do that in my head. Um, it's something like... A, 108 or something. Um, where is it? Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, 0 0.0108. That is a weird zero. I apologize. Okay, meters to the fourth. Okay. The YC and the HC, these are a little bit trickier. Okay, because they we can't just look at this picture. We have to look at this overall picture over here. Okay, and so we note that, okay, here's our, um, here's our centroid right here. So um, our HC is going to go like this. Um, it's going from, okay, straight up. Okay, our YC 
Okay, our YC is going to go along the face until it hits where the surface of the water would be. So it goes like this. All right? Okay, and we note that, you know, here's the surface of the water, okay, or where it would be, right? And we know that this angle is 39 degrees. Okay? So, um, so the nice thing here is that, you know, this is HC. No, sorry, that's YC. This is uh, YC, and this is HC, okay? And they're related through trig, right? So um, whichever one we solve first, and you can solve whichever one you want, but we'll note that YC is the hypotenuse. So YC times the sine of 39 degrees equals the HC, okay? So whichever one you decide to, to solve for first, you can use the definition of a sine in order to get the other, right? So that's nice. Okay, the problem here is that we have two distances, and one distance, and the distances are not um, in the same direction. So one of them is right here, and that's 12 meters. Okay, so I can't add the 12 meters and the 0.3 meters because they're in different directions, different angles, whatever, right? So we could solve for the YC first or the HC first. It doesn't matter which one. They're not, neither one is easier or harder. It's just kind of like, what do you see, right? So maybe I'll do this. I'll go ahead and get this distance right here, right? And I'll do that using this same triangle, right? So I'll do that, let's see here, the sine of 39 equals, okay, the opposite, which is 12 meters over this side, which I don't know what to call that. We'll just call that y, I'll just call it y, doesn't matter. Okay, right? So y equals 12 meters divided by the sine of 39. Okay, so if we do that in a calculator, did I do that in a calculator on my thing? I have no idea. Let's pause for a second and we find a calculator. Okay, 19.068 meters. Okay, so that's this distance right here from the top of the gate to the top of the water in the direction of the gate. Okay, now if I wanna make that y to the centroid, Okay, I need to add this extra 0 0.3, right? So we're gonna make this 19.368 meters, okay? Um, and that's the YC, okay? If I wanna get the HC, well then I gotta plug that in right there to the YC, right? So HC equals this number times the sine of 39. So let's see here, um, times the sine of 39 degrees, close it. Okay, so that's uh, 12.189 meters. Okay, so there's the HC and the YC. Okay, and you have to look at this diagram and figure that out, okay? So let's go, um, so that's the first like most common error is that you know, people tried to add vertical distances with diagonal distances and it, it's, uh, it's meaningless in the, in the purpose, for the purpose of our, uh, our equations. Okay, so anyway, so let's go back over here. So here's the things that I want from my um, from my thing, from my shape. So 12.189 meters, and this is 19.368 meters. Okay, so now we're going to go down here, and I'm going to get my FP. Okay, so FP equals uh, gamma is 1.03 times, oh, we need a, we need a gamma of water. Okay, notice we're using meters, so we use 98.10 newtons per meter cubed. Okay, the HC was 12.189 uh, meters, and the area was 0 0.36 meters squared. Okay, so the FP predictably should be pretty large because we're under 12 meters of water, um, and it comes out to uh, 44, 44 point, we're just going to go to kilonewtons. 338 kilonewtons. Okay, obviously, if you wanted to leave that in newtons, totally fine. Okay, so now we go down here, and here's YCP. YCP equals, well, the YC is 19.368 meters plus the IXX, which is 0 0.0108 uh, meters to the fourth divided by YC. 19.368 meters times this area, which is 0 0.36 meters squared. 
Okay, so um, if we add all this up, it doesn't really, it's really not that much deeper than the YC. Um, and there's a very good reason for that. Um, it's basically because it's a tiny gate under a lot of water. Okay, so it's almost the same number here as here, but it's a little bit different. Okay, uh, and the reason for that, yeah, again, this gate is so tiny that it, you know, the difference between the top and the bottom doesn't really matter all that much. Okay, so anyway, um, so now we have these two things, right? So this FP is great because it can plug directly in over here to my equation. This, however, this YCP cannot, okay? Because I, I want you to remember here, and this is uh, a bit tricky, I guess, um, you know, this YCP is if we go up here, and let's see if I can do this in, um, I don't know what color. Let's do it in green. Um, where's my ruler? Here we go. Dang, gum it. Ruler stuck on the desk. Okay, good. All right, so, um, so the YCP is just like a little bit below the Y. So here's our YCP, but our YCP, or this is where the force is acting at a distance YCP from the surface of the water. So this is distance YCP. But that's not the distance I want. I want this distance, um, this distance right here, right? So what I need to know is I need to know this total distance in black, I guess we'll do, from here all the way up to here. I need to know what that total distance is, and then I need to subtract off this YCP, and that will give me this, what I think I called it YFP distance right here. Okay, so that total distance, well, let's see here. The YC is right here, okay, and that's to right here. And I've only got to go another 0.3 to go the full distance, right? Because that's, you know, half of this thing right here, so another 0.3. So the total, so from, I guess, hinge to water, let's, uh, let's erase here. And we'll say Y hinge to water surface, okay, equals this number plus another 0.3. So it's 19.668 meters, okay? The YCP, which we already solved for, was, um, what is that? Mm, oh, 19.370 meters. So the difference between those two is going to tell me... Um, you know, what this YFP is, as I've written it here, this distance right here, okay? The distance from the hinge to the force of pressure. Okay, so if we subtract those two, okay, if you subtract those, you'll get um, 0 0.298 meters, which is, you know, very close to being that 0 0.03, right? Because remember, um, the YCP and the YP were very close to each other, right? So. Uh, 0.98. So, um, so now we're ready. So we're going to put that number in here, 0 0.298 meters. We've got the FP, negative, what, 44.338 uh, 338 kilonewtons. Okay, plus P times 0 0.6 meters equals zero. And if we solve for all of that, we're going to get, okay, so that, you know, 21.021, which... If we take the three sig figures, 21.0 kilonewtons. Okay. Um, oh, nope, sorry. Uh, 22.021, so 22.0 kilonewtons. Okay, calculator failure on me. Okay, so um, that's it. Um, how did I grade this? Um, so what I wanted was, um, so, you know, starting with our final equation, plus one for all of the numbers that went into there. Um, and then we kind of go into these equations over here. Um, and so basically it's, did you get the right gamma? Did you get the right HC? Did you get the right area? And know what to do with it. Okay, same thing down here. Did you get the same, y, the right YC, the right I double X, and the right um, area? Okay, um, the errors on this one were all over the place. Um, the errors, let's see here. Okay, so I've already mentioned a few of these. Um, the most important thing here is draw a free body diagram. Oh yeah, so all that should add up to 10 points. Okay, so draw a free body diagram. Um, don't add lines that aren't 
parallel. Um, there were just so many little weird methods that we did. Um, and then um, the last thing here, I, I thought this was, uh, it was an interesting uh, error, is that one of you said, oh, this thing is, this force is going to be FP. So if we do our free body diagram like this, so we got P and FP. And the idea was to say that FP is going to be taking, is going to be happening because the pressure prism looks like this. Well, this was the idea anyway. Um, this FP is happening here, which is two thirds the way down this gate. Okay, so in this case, that would have been 0 0.4 meters down with another 0 0.2 meters to go. Okay, that only works if your pressure prism is a triangle. Okay, and in fact, it worked in this case, but it only worked for the triangular portion of the pressure prism. So really, the pressure prism, if we were to draw it, because we're so deep, it's actually like this, right? And I'm unexaggerating. It's actually much taller than this. Okay, and it's basically got... Sorry, I'm running out of room here. All right. So it's got all these arrows coming down here, and it's got a triangular portion, which, in fact, this portion, the resultant is, in fact, happening two-thirds the way down. And then it's got a... Um, you know, another portion, which is happening right at the centroid, okay, which is another FP, so we call this two and one. And so you could have done it like that. It turns out that uh, because this thing is so deep and the, um, the you know, the, the gate was so small that this portion is relatively small compared to this portion, okay? In fact, that's one of the reasons why the net, the total force was acting, you know, so not quite at the centroid, but just the tiniest bit deeper. It's because this portion almost doesn't matter all at all in this problem. All right, so um, I guess it's been about 45 minutes, a little over 45 minutes. So I guess we're going to sign off. Um, just remember, take care of yourselves. And remember that uh, you are more important than this test. And uh, let me know if I can help you. Okay, um, this is Wayne signing off. All right, bye. Take gummits.